After completing this lesson, you will know of the existence of the MLC 2006 and have an overview of the structure of the MLC 2006 and also know the main responsibilities of the ship's master and senior officers under the MLC 2006. Over the past eight decades, there have been approximately 70 labor standards adopted by the International Labor Organization. Many of these standards have never been ratified by all of the member states, and some are now completely outdated. The decision was taken in 2001 to review and consolidate all the existing labor standards into a single, relevant, internationally agreed and enforced standard. This new standard adopted by the International Labour Organization in 2006, is the Maritime Labour Convention 2006. The convention is also referred to as MLC 2006 and the Seafarers' Bill of Rights. The MLC 2006 is seen as the fourth pillar, alongside MARPOL, SOLAS and STCW, in regulating the international maritime industry. The convention will enter into force 12 months after ratification by 30 member states, with a total share of at least 33% of world tonnage. A five-year action plan was drawn up to try to ensure an acceptable time frame for this. The convention will apply to all ships engaged in commercial activities, with the following exceptions. The convention does not apply to ships which navigate exclusively in inland waterways, or within, or closely adjacent to, sheltered waters or areas where port regulations apply, or to ships engaged in fishing, or to ships which are traditionally built, such as dows and junks, or to warships or naval auxiliaries. As well as consolidating the existing labor conventions and recommendations, there are four main aims of the convention. These are to set minimum standards for seafarers to work on ships and to ensure they have good working and living conditions. The convention addresses seafarers' employment conditions and accommodation standards as well as a wide range of health, welfare and social issues. The convention should also have sufficient flexibility to allow members to adapt their national laws and regulations, which should encourage ship operators and owners to comply with the requirements of the convention. Finally, the Convention should ensure that there are the necessary procedures for complaints, supervision and inspection to ensure compliance by strengthening enforcement mechanisms at all levels. In achieving these aims, the Convention should help to improve the quality of life of seafarers, both on board ship and ashore, by giving them equal rights to those enjoyed by workers ashore. It should also ensure decent working conditions and decent living conditions for seafarers on board ship and give ship owners a level playing field to operate in. The overall result of achieving these aims should be a general increase in the quality of shipping. As you can see, there are five elements in the structure of the Convention. These are the Preamble, the Articles, the Titles, the Regulations, and finally, the two-part code. In addition to these five elements, there is also an appendices to the convention. There are a number of identified areas of responsibility for the various parties affected by the convention. The International Labour Organization has the responsibility to ensure that its members fully implement the requirements of the Convention. Member States have a responsibility to ensure that their national laws and regulations are adapted to cover the requirements of the Convention. They also have the responsibility to appoint a competent authority to monitor and enforce compliance with the Convention. This will normally be achieved through a system of certification and a program of flag state and port state control inspections carried out by the competent authority or by recognized organizations appointed by them. Ship owners and ship operators have a responsibility to generate policies and procedures which, when properly implemented, will ensure compliance with the requirements of the Convention. 
Ships masters and, on their behalf, ships senior officers have the responsibility to implement the owners' policies and procedures in order to ensure initial and ongoing compliance on board the ships that they sail on. The diagram shows the complex relationship between the various parties affected by the convention. For the rest of this module, we will concentrate on the onboard responsibilities of the master under the convention. The main responsibility of the master under the MLC 2006 is to operate the vessel in such a way as to ensure ongoing compliance with the convention. This will mean maintaining compliance with all applicable parts of the convention and being able to provide evidence of this during flag state and port state inspections. There are a number of areas which have been specifically identified for inspection and these will be dealt with in the following lessons. In this lesson, we have briefly reviewed the aims and structure of the International Labour Organization's Maritime Labour Convention 2006. We have also identified certain areas of responsibility for the parties affected or involved with operation of the convention. There are a number of areas which have been specifically identified for inspection, and these will be dealt with in the following lessons. Before moving on to the next lesson, you should complete the following self-test questions to check what you have learnt so far.